Stanford University. All right, guys. Welcome to uh, CS 193P Lecture 7. Uh, we talked a lot on Tuesday, uh, Thursday of last week, I guess, about um, the basics of view controllers and some of the really fundamental things. But So today we're going to get into some of the more interesting ways that you can actually take advantage of uh, UI view controller and some of the other classes that UI kit provides that you can combine with your own view controller subclasses to really start creating more full featured applications. A lot of the, the basic view controller stuff we talked about last week is, is kind of the, the fundamental stuff and a lot of it in, by itself probably doesn't seem super interesting. It, it kind of standardizes the controller um, of the model view controller for you and, and gives you a, a good starting point for that. But by itself, it doesn't really make an application. So we'll talk about uh, a bunch of things today that uh, really let you take that and, and make a full application out of it. Uh, so first of all, any questions from Thursday, uh, assignment three, anything anyone needs any help with? <laughs> all right, cool. Um, so a couple of announcements. Assignment three, as you know, is due tomorrow. Um, and we'll be uh, putting out Paparazzi 1, it's assignment 4. It's the first part. Al mentioned it in lecture 1. We didn't really talk too much about it yet. Uh, we're going to see some bits about it today, a couple of screenshots of what we're going to be trying to build. Um, the basic idea is it's going to be an application to, uh, to view a bunch of photos. You can, it'll pull them down off the uh, internet and store them locally in a core data database and uh, plot them on maps. So uh, we'll, we'll be doing that over the course of the next four weeks, and we'll, we'll be starting in the, assi the assignment this week, uh, Paparazzi 1, which uh, we'll talk about a little bit later. So yeah, what we're going to get over today, we're going to start with navigation controllers. Navigation controller is a subclass of UI view controller. It's provided by UIKit, uh, and it, it implements uh, the basic flow of a lot of the applications that are uh, already on the iPhone that, that come with the iPhone itself. Um, the mail application, the, the contacts application, a lot of these things use the basic UI, view, uh, UI navigation controller data flow. Uh, and the idea here is pretty much that you've got uh, a collection of view controllers that, that sort of uh, make a big stack of view controllers that your user navigates through in order to view different parts of your application. So in, in mail, for example, you've got a first view controller that has your mailboxes, a second one that has uh, the content of a particular mailbox, and then a final one that has... Um, the actual content of a particular message. And you can use each of those separate screens of information. We talked about the concept of kind of a, a screen full of information being what you'd use a view controller for last week. Each of those separate screenfuls and separate view controller subclasses you can put on a navigation controller, and that provides a lot of the uh, default behaviors that you need to allow the user to slide back and forth through them and get to different parts of your app. So we'll talk about how you use that to do that. And we'll talk about a bit about the application data flow between those separate view controllers. As you're pushing new ones onto this navigation stack and your users migrating through parts of your application, you'll need to get data from one to another. And, and we'll talk about the basic design patterns and, and the way we usually go about doing that. Uh, we'll talk about customizing navigation. There, there's a couple properties on view controller that let you uh, change the way things appear on screen uh, and the way the navigation controller presents them. We'll talk about how you can use that. Uh, and we'll end up with tab bars, uh, which is provided by UI tab bar controller. It's a separate subclass of UI view controller provided by UIKit. Um, and it basically manages the other major type of application flow that we have on the iPhone, which is this concept of a tab bar at the bottom of the screen that lets a user tap between multiple different uh, discrete types of information. They're not, they're not really a hierarchy, but side-by-side -side separate pieces of uh, your application. And then we'll talk about how you combine those two things together to have a tabbed application with different sections that has navigation within each of those sections. So first off, we'll start out with navigation controllers. This is a pretty exciting topic, and th there's actually a lot that you can do with this. A, a lot of the de default application styles and, and uh, the applications that ship on the phone use this exact technique, and the entire application is built around it. So uh, it's, it's a pretty fundamental building block for a lot of things on the iPhone. So as we can see on the, on the left here, uh, we've got the contacts application, which is, is basically a navigation controller application uh, that lets you slide through multiple screens. The first one that we see here is the all contacts. It shows you all the contacts. Your user would tap on one, and then that would slide out, and a page, uh, another view controller full of information about that particular content, contact would slide in. Uh, so it's basically a, a stack of view controllers, like we just said. It, it, it's got, um, it manages this stack for you. You push view controllers on, and, and they go onto the stack and appear on the top. As you push another one, it goes off, and it's off screen. The navigation controller still knows about it. And now the new one is pushed on and is, becomes visible. 
as the user taps the back button up at the top there, that one slides off, it pops off the stack, and the previous one that was there becomes visible. So you get the navigation controller and it's got its array of view controllers. It manages that navigation bar up at the top for you. Uh, it handles putting the title up in there. It handles putting the back button up there that you see on the left. Um, and and it, as you're sliding through navigation controllers, it updates the navigation bar for you. For the most part, you're not really gonna have to touch the navigation bar directly. The navigation bar in this case, well, actually navigation bar in general, is a, it's a subclass of UI view. Um, so you, you can get it and, and deal with it like a UI view. But if you're using a UI navigation controller, you usually don't have to do that. It, it handles most of the specifics of positioning it and sizing it uh, and, and handles all that for you. So let's take a quick look at how this all fits together, but we're gonna switch over to mail now from the address book because there's actually one other piece that mail uses from navigation controller, which address book doesn't. And, and that's the toolbar that you see at the bottom. Uh, this is actually new in iPhone OS 3.0, so if you're dealing with iPhone OS 2.0, um, this, this feature is not available. But in 3.0 and later, uh, we have this support and navigation controller for managing a contextual toolbar that you see at the bottom. Uh, and we'll talk about how you'd use that a bit later, but basically uh, your navigation, the, the top view controller uh, defines what's in the toolbar. So what, what's the top view controller? In this case, it's everything in the middle between the navigation bar at the top and the toolbar at the bottom is the view from your view controller. Uh, this is where things become pretty interesting and, and it's really important um, that you set up, uh, sorry, this is where the, the structs and springs that we talked about become really interesting. Um, in, in Interface Builder, the default size of a view controller's view is 320 by 480, so it's actually the, the full screen size. Uh, it actually may be 300 by 480 to take into account the, the um, status bar at the top. But in any case, it, it's much bigger than the available space uh, on the screen when you're presenting inside of a navigation controller because you lose 44 pixels at the top to the navigation bar and another 44 at the bottom potentially to the toolbar if you have one. Uh, if you set up all your structs and springs in Interface Builder correctly, uh, when your navigation controller takes this top view controller and puts it in here and makes it shorter, everything will relay out and resize down to the new size so it all fits. Uh, if you haven't set up your structs and springs, uh, struts and springs in Interface Builder, then things might uh, overlap the nav bar or the, or the toolbar at the bottom, so you might have stuff get cropped and things wouldn't quit, quite fit right. So you want to make sure that's all set up and then everything just will happen for you. When, when the navigation controller presents the view controller, it'll size it down, everything will relay out, and it'll all fit great. So that's the top view controller. At the top, we've got uh, the view controller's title. We'll talk more about this later, but every view controller has a, a string property that is its title. Navigation controller displays that in the navigation bar for you. Uh, on the left is the back button. The title that's in the back button is actually the title for the previous view controller on the stack. So it, it's not the current, it's in no way related to the current view controller, it's actually the previous view controller. So if you push two view controllers, the title of the one that you just pushed off goes into the back button. And then at the bottom, as we said, we've got the toolbar from the top view controller. Um, we'll talk more about this later too, but basically you have an array of items that appear in a toolbar. Uh, you don't create a toolbar directly, you create a, an array of items that go in a toolbar. Um, and the top view controller has a, this property that you can assign that array to, which defines the items for the toolbar. Navigation bar, or navigation controller will put them in a toolbar at the bottom for you when it's the top thing on the navigation stack. All right, so we've talked a lot about navigation stacks here as we're talking about this concept of navigation controller. And uh, as I mentioned, it's, it's an array of uh, view controller subclasses usually. Um, could just be a UI view controller, although generally you don't use UI view controller directly. You usually subclass it because you need to provide some controller specific logic for the particular uh, subclass that you're dealing with. Um, so we've got these, uh, this concept of view controllers on the navigation stack. Uh, so how do we get them there? Well, you usually will start out by pushing a view controller onto your navigation stack. So there's a, a method on UI, view, uh, UI navigation controller called push view controller animated. Uh, the first parameter it takes is the view controller you want to push on, and then a property defines whether or not that should be animated during the transition. Uh, this is interesting when you're first setting up your application, uh, especially. In that case, you often want to say animated no. So as you're creating your application uh, on first launch and you're, and you're setting up your user interface, if you want to have the application start out with multiple things on the navigation stack, you don't want to see, have the user see them all animate on right at the beginning. So you'd usually in that case push view controller animated no so that they just all show up uh, on the final one without seeing uh, the animations of the intermediate ones pushing. 
And then to get them off, we have a pop view controller, uh, which also takes an animated parameter to define whether or not to animate that transition. Um, the normal transition for navigation controller when pushing and popping, when you push a view controller, it takes the new one and slides it on, sliding the old one off the other side. And then popping is the inverse. It slides it the other way. Uh, so the animated determines whether or not that slide is going to happen. Uh, and pop view controller actually returns the view controller that's being popped. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you know from your normal just CS in general uh, how a stack works. You, you push some things on it. It's uh, first in, last out. So you push a couple things. Uh, when you go to pop, it's going to remove the most recently pushed, and it'll return it to you if you want to hang on to it. Um, UI navigation controller retains any of the view controllers that are pushed on it. So if you don't need to have a reference to it for your own purposes elsewhere in the application, once you've pushed a view controller onto a navigation controller, you can actually release it yourself. View, uh, navigation controller maintains that retain count for you. When it's popped, navigation controller will auto-release it. So if you don't have um, a reference to it and a retain count to the view controller being popped somewhere else, at this point you'll be getting back an auto-released object that'll go away if you don't hang on to it. Uh, and then the final new method, which is actually added in iPhone OS 3.0 as well, is a set view controllers animated method. Uh, it's basically it lets you replace the entire contents of the navigation stack with one call. Uh, this is probably not going to be used very much in this course. There's definitely specific cases where you might want to do it. Um, the general case will be pushing and popping. Usually adding and removing things from the navigation controller is uh, a response to a user interaction. The user selects something in a table and you push a new view controller on. But if there's a case where you actually need to replace the entire view hierarchy or set it up all at once with one call, you can do it with set view controllers animated, and it'll replace all the view controllers on the navigation stack. Um, if the ones that are being replaced, uh, if the new array of view controllers that you're setting contains a, the view controller that's currently visible, navigation controller will do its best to animate to that. So if it looks like it's a, a pop, it's going to try and animate the pop. Um, how that works is a, kind of an implementation detail. and you can kind of play with it to see what it ends up doing. Um, but basically, it'll do its best to either maintain no animation if the view controller doesn't seem to be moving, or animate it if it looks like it's shifting around in the array. So that's how we modify it. Um, as I mentioned, you have to, at some point, push your first view controller. You, you create your UI navigation controller, and you have to get something on it to start out. So what's that going to look like? Well, we're probably going to do it when we're setting up our initial application. So a great place for that is in the application delegates. Application did finish launching. Uh, as we already saw from some of the previous uh, assignments, application did finish launching is the first thing that gets called after the application has come up on screen, uh, or sorry, has, has begun to uh, animate up, but before it actually becomes visible. So it's a good place to set up our initial user interface. So the first thing we'll do is allocate our new UI navigation controller. Uh, in this case, we're just going to do it in code so that we can kind of see how this looks uh, and, and the specifics of how you would implement it in code. A lot of this you can actually do in Interface Builder as well. Um, if, if in your main window nib you just dragged out a UI navigation controller, that would be equivalent to alloc knitting one here. Um, obviously, you'd need to create an outlet um, from your application delegate to the nav controller so that you can get a pointer to it. Um, but you can either alloc knit it in code or just create it in your, in your nib. So in this case, we'll alloc init one uh, right in our application did finish launching. And then we'll use the method we just saw, push view controller animated, to put a fir our first view controller on it. In this case, we'll assume we've already got some subclass of UI view controller, and we've alloc initted one. So we've got our UI first view controller. We'll push it on there. Animated no, because we don't want to see the transition for the first one. And finally, we have to add that to uh, add the navigation controller's view as a subview of the window. Uh, this is pretty similar to what you saw last week for uh, just adding a view controller's view to the window. In this case, we'll add the navigation controller's view to the window. Navigation controller, as, as I already said, is just a subclass of UI view controller. So it already has a view property, and it knows how to give you back a view. Um, it actually manages uh, a view that contains um, some other views, including the navigation bar, the tab bar, and uh, your view controller's views that are being animated around. So the one it gives you back actually contains all those other things. So you just ask the nav controller for its view and add it as a subview of the window, and that sets up the basic uh, basis of your application. All right, so we've got our basic thing set up. In this case, though, it's not very interesting yet, because all we've really got now is a simple navigation controller with one view controller. But the whole point of navigation controller is to have this stack of view controllers. So in response to some user action, we want to push some new view controller onto the stack. So what's that going to look like? Um, 
Well, in this case, we're going to assume that we've got some action method, possibly an ID outlet set up to connect to a button when the user presses the button, or maybe a table view selection notification, which we won't talk about until uh, next lecture, but you'll see that then. Um, basically, some action method gets fired as a result of the user doing something. So we'll call it some action. Um, we're going to create a new UI view controller in this case. Um, we'll get it from however you wanted to get it, probably alloc a new view controller instance. Um, we're going to call self.navigation controller push view controller animated. Now, there's a couple of assumptions here and uh, a, a bit of things that are happening for us. So the first assumption is that um, some action is a method implemented on our first view controller, the one that we just pushed at the beginning, our, our first view controller, the first thing that's the first view controller in the navigation stack. So because of that, we're going to uh, call self. And self.navigation controller, you can ask any view controller for its navigation controller. And if it's in a navigation controller, it'll give you back that navigation controller. So this is our first view controller. It's already in a navigation controller. So self.navigation controller returns the pointer to that view controller, or sorry, that navigation controller. So we get our, root view, our, our first uh, navigation controller and call push view controller animated. In this case, we're going to call animated yes because we want it to push the previous one off and slide the new one on in an animated fashion. Um, so you almost never call pop directly. This is how you're going to push things on. But when you go to remove something from the navigation stack, you, you've pushed a new one on, now you want to get it off. You usually don't do that programmatically. For the, for the most part, that's done by the user when they tap on the, the back button. And UI Navigation Controller implements the, the handling of the back button tap for you. So for the most part, you don't generally have to call pop view controller. There's some cases where you might. Um, for example, in the iPod application, um, while it's playing through songs, when it gets to the end of a playlist, if you're looking at it and it's actually at the now playing screen, once it finishes the last song in the playlist, it goes back to the list of songs. And that's basically just a programmatic pop of the top view controller. Um, so there are some cases where you might want to do it. But generally speaking, you're going to rely on the user tapping the back button to pop. So you usually don't have to do that yourself. All right, so uh, that's the basic idea of what we're going to do. Let's uh, do a quick demo and take a look at how all, all this fits together and how we'd set it up. All right, so we're going to create a new project. We'll create a window-based application. There's actually a navigation-based application template that is available in Xcode for you that sets a lot of this up. But for the purposes of what we're trying to show here, it's, it's kind of set up a bit too much. It, it would also give us a, a bunch of uh, table views, and um, it, it's more than we need right now. So we'll actually start out with a window-based application just as a really basic uh, starting point. We've already seen this before, so I'm just going to create a new push, oops, push pop project. Uh, and we've got some basic classes, but we don't have any view controllers yet because we just created the window one. So let's start out by creating our new root view controller. So we'll create a new file and do UI view controller subclass. Um, so one of the nice new things in Xcode and iPhone OS 3.0 is that you can actually, when creating your view controller subclass, tell it that you want it to create an XIB for you. Um, previously, you actually had to do that as a separate step and then connect a bunch of things in Interface Builder to get it all set up. Uh, we're just going to check the box here that we want an XIB. So it's going to create the new XIB for us and set up uh, our uh, files owner and the first view um, outlet for us so we don't have to do that part. So we'll do that and we'll just call it first fish, yeah, first view controller. And we've got our XIB, it created it for us. Uh, so let's take a look at that real quick. So it's got a couple of things created, as I said. We've got our files owner is already set to be uh, the first view controller class that we created. That's the class identity is the first view controller. And it already knows that the view outlet of that class should be connected to this view here. So if we had, to, had created the XIB ourselves, we would have had to set those two things up manually. It already did that for us, so we don't have to do that. So let's take a look at the view. This is going to be the first view controller. It's the first thing we're going to put on our navigation stack. So in this case, we're going to, we need it to have some kind of interface element so that we can interact with it and get it to push another view controller. So we'll just drag out a new button and uh, call it push another. Just put that in the center there. Uh, let's go back to Xcode for a second and set up our uh, action method so that we can actually connect that button so that something will happen when we click it. So we need IB action here. Has everyone figured out what IB action is at this point? Do everyone know what that is? Anyone know what that is? Void. Yep. Yeah, so IB action is actually void. If you, if you command double click on it, you get to the header, which defines it. 
Um, it's actually just void. It's a special keyword that IB looks for when it's parsing your header file to figure out what methods you want it to uh, use to show that you can connect things to. So uh, when it compiles, it's actually just a void return because those uh, action methods don't return a value. And actually, you can see here IB outlet is also defined. It's actually defined a way to be nothing. Um, it's just a keyword, again, that IB looks for. So let's go back to our header here. We have, uh, we're going to define our action method, push view controller. And we'll define sender. And we'll copy that into our header, or else we're going to have some crashes when we start calling things. Or sorry, into our implementation file. I'm not going to implement it just yet. So now we can go back to Interface Builder. And if I can see everything here, we can control drag from that push button up to our file's owner, which is that view controller, and just connect it to push view controller. All right, so we've got that set up. Now we can go back to our application delegate. And we actually need to now import the header file for that new view controller we just created. So we'll pound import first view controller.h. And now we'll go down to our application did finish launching and actually set up this stuff we just talked about. So the first thing we have to do is create our UI navigation controller. Uh, we are, we're actually going to have to hold on to a, the instance of it because uh, if we didn't hang on to the UI navigation controller, since it's the root view controller, if we just released it, it would actually go away and then everything would be broken. So we'll add an IVAR to our application delegate header for that UI navigation controller that we're about to create. And then an application fin did finish launching, we'll allocate it. And in it. Now we also need to uh, deallocate it, so we'll be good with our memory management. So we'll go to dealloc, and when we're ending our application, we're going to nav controller dealloc, just to make sure we keep everything in sync and cleaned up there. And as I mentioned, uh, we have to add it to the window. So we'll call window add subview nav controller dot view. I had an extra guy in there. So that by itself, we've created this other view controller. Oops. What did I do? Oh, how did, where did that come from? Nice. Is it over here? No. All right, so uh, that by itself, we haven't actually created our first view controller yet. So if we build and run it, we get something that's actually pretty boring. It's really, well, let's rotate it so we can kind of see it. Uh, it's really just um, our navigation controller with no content because we haven't pushed anything onto it yet. So we want to make sure we do that. So let's go ahead and allocate our new first view controller that we're going to push onto the navigation controller. Oops. Alloc init. Uh, we'll, we have our nav controller here, so we can just nav controller, push view controller, animated. Uh, push view controller, that first view controller we just allocated. Animated, yes, because we want to actually see, uh, sorry, animated, no, because we don't want to see it slide on. Um, and now we don't need a pointer to that anymore because we're not going to change any properties on it, so we don't have to save it. Uh, the, the navigation controller, now that it's been pushed on there, is retaining it. So we can just uh, first view controller release. Now we've cleaned up our reference to that memory and we don't need it anymore, but it's still going to stick around because it'll be on the nav stack. So now when we run, oops, we actually see it on there. We've got our nav bar that the nav controller created and the root view controller is this push button. So uh, not too interesting yet. We're, we're still just displaying one thing. So let's allocate, or, uh, let's create one more class, a new view controller subclass. Call it second view controller. Um, and we'll open up its interface builder document. And we'll just add some text to it. Let's add a label. Uh, having trouble on this little screen here. Uh, I'm second. Put that in there. Um, and now we'll go back to our implementation of first view controller. So we need to import our header for the second view controller because we're about to allocate one of those. And now we'll implement that action method that we just uh, defined in IB on first view controller. And the implementation of that is going to allocate the second view controller and push onto it, or push it onto the navigation stack. So we've got our second view controller. Second view controller, we're going to alloc init it. Uh, we're going to get our navigation controller. So we're already on the navigation stack, so we can call self.navigationcontroller. And we're going to push view controller on that. We'll push the second view controller we just allocated. 
animated yes this time because it's in response to user action. We're going to actually want to see it slide on. And again, we don't need to keep a reference to it. So oops, second view controller, oh, not dialog, release. Did I call dialog in the first one? Because uh, I called the wrong thing. <laughs> Sorry about that. That should be release. Yeah, never called the alloc, despite what I may have just done there. <laughs> All right, sorry, let's go back and make sure I didn't screw that one up on the second one here. So we're uh, allocating our second view controller, getting the navigation controller, and pushing that second view controller onto the stack, and then we're going to release it. We don't need it anymore. So now we can just push that on. It says I'm second. Um, However, up in the nav bar, we don't really have any interesting things happening yet. There's no title up here. The back button just says back. It's not particularly interesting. So let's go back to these two view controllers real quick. And uh, do we actually have an awake from nib in here yet? Oh, sorry, in custom in there. All right, so uh, let's, let's add this here. When we allocate our, our navigation controller, we've allocated second view controller. Let's give it a name. As I mentioned, view controller actually has a name property. So let's go second view controller dot, uh, sorry, a title property. Call the second one second. And then back in uh, the application delegate where we allocated the first one, let's give that one a title too. Oops. We allocate it. Let's call the, second, uh, the first one first. And I uh, called that one second there. First view controller. All right, so now when we run it, we actually get some stuff up in the nav bar. The first one gets the, its title is shown up there. When we push the second one, the title swaps out for second, and the title of the first one goes into the back button. So the back button now says first. And we can just go back and forth between those. As we pop the second one, its memory goes away because the view controller, or the navigation controller releases its reference to it. So all our memory management is good. Uh, we're not calling dialic anymore, we're calling release. And uh, so we're good to go. All right, so now we've got this navigation hierarchy set up, and we've got two separate view controllers in there, and we can push between them, and, and that's, that's kind of cool. We can see some stuff. But in a real application, usually the second view controller needs to know something about uh, the first view controller's data. In some way, you need to tell that second view controller what the user tapped on. If you had a list of uh, elements in a table view, you'd have to tell the uh, second view controller uh, which piece of detail information to display. Um, there's a couple of ways you could do that, but we'll, we'll talk about uh, this way that we usually do this in uh, our applications on the iPhone. Uh, an example of what we're going to be doing that is going to actually need this is the paparazzi, papar, paparazzi application that we're going to be building over the next four weeks. Uh, so this is kind of the first time we're seeing what this is going to look like. Basically, on the left-hand side, we're going to have our root view controller and our navigation stack is going to be uh, a basic thing that shows you a list of users. In this case, we've got uh, Al and myself. When you tap on the view button for one of those guys, we'll slide in a new view controller that contains the list of photos that uh, that user has. So in this case, I've got two photos in there. And uh, you actually wouldn't want to have separate subclasses for both Al and Josh. You don't need an Al view controller and a Josh view controller. You really just want one view controller subclass that represents a, a list of photos, like a photo list view controller. And you want to tell that view controller whose photos to display. Um, or which, maybe even more generally, which, which photos to display. Um, the, the specific case of it being whose could be logic in, in the first view controller. So uh, we'll talk about how that would work. And then finally, we've got actually a, a final view controller that's off screen here, can't quite see, which displays uh, the full photo at, at full size. Um, and so we'll push that on after we tap the view button in the second view controller, and we'll need to tell it which photo to display. Um, these photos actually, uh, Al uh, has... Uh, is a big fan of, of Flickr, so we've got some good photos, thanks to uh, Flickr there, the, the guys who posted these photos, for letting us borrow them. All right, so uh, this is the basic idea that we've got. We've got our list controller, which is going to get another list controller. That uh, th The first list will show the list of contacts. Second list is going to show the list of photos for that contact. And then finally, a detail controller, which shows the detail, the, the actual image. Um, we can sort of simplify this uh, for the general case of just a list and a detail. So we'll take a look closer at that. Um, all right, so how are we going to connect these things? Uh, there's, there's a couple of ways you might do this. Um, oops, hang on. So you, you might start out thinking, well, I can just have a big global variable and, and shove the current application state into the global variable, 
And uh, all the view controllers can look at that global variable, and they all know where everything is. They all share the data. Um, th that could work, and it, it's kind of an easy way to do it. But it, it's not very reusable. It's not very uh, maintainable. Once your application knows everything about it, you, you end up with this huge twisted mess of all the different pieces your application have to know about everything else. And it, it totally breaks the encapsulation of the model view controller design. Um, and it makes it a lot more difficult to debug and test. So we kind of want to avoid that. We really don't want to go there. So you might think, well, all right, then let's have the application delegate be this intermediate. And we can have the application delegate know everything. We can get that from everywhere. We can call UI application, shared application delegate, and uh, get the delegate. So we'll just shove all the state into there. But that's pretty much the same as having a big global variable. It, it's really no better. It's effectively the exact same thing. So we really don't want to do that. We, we want to avoid that pattern as well. So all right, how are we actually going to do it? What, what do we want to do? So uh, we need to figure out exactly what information needs to be communicated between these view controllers, and then just come up with a way to, to pass just the information we need between them. So for the case of the detail controller, we need to define the input parameters, the things that it needs to know about. And we'll have the first view controller, when it creates it, set those parameters on the detail. Um, so it'll look a lot like this. List controller creates that data object and passes it to the detail controller through the parameter that we've defined to represent the data it needs to know about. Um, then sometimes you actually need to be able to communicate backwards the other way. Uh, if the user has actually entered some information on the detail controller to actually like, change their title or change some state about the data, the detail controller may need to communicate that back to the list controller to tell it that this change happened. And we talked a bit about how you might do this earlier. Uh, earlier, uh, probably in lecture two or three, I think, when we talked about um, protocols and delegates. So in this case, you might want to define a delegate protocol that your detail controller can, uh, can offer for your list controller to conform to. Um, and you can basically define a bunch of methods that uh, the detail controller would call on its delegate when particular changes happen. So the list controller doesn't have to be quite as uh, tightly tied, and, and you don't have an intermediate um, bit of uh, global data in, involved in that. So that would look kind of something like this. You'd basically have the list controller telling the detail controller that it cares. And it would do that by setting the delegate, or set, setting itself as the delegate of the detail controller when it pushes it onto the app stack. Um, as a result of having done that, when something in the detail controller changes that the delegate would need to know about, the detail controller would just tell its delegate, not necessarily knowing that it's specifically this list controller, just that it's its delegate, um, about the thing that changed. So it gets its changes, and it'll send them back. Um, and they, they communicate directly. It, it's kind of loosely coupled. There's, there's no direct hard coding of these two things. These two objects know specifically about each other. It's just that there's this delegate protocol, and, and there's some properties that are being set. So nothing's really set in stone. You can still take these two pieces apart and use them in other places and have some other object as the delegate of your detail controller, and everything could still work. So as long as you maintain kind of this loose coupling, it, it keeps it pretty flexible and, and makes your code more maintainable. So it's a pretty convenient way to do this and, and makes it pretty uh, easy to maintain and, and change your code as you go forward. All right, so let's take a quick look at just a, an example of this in one of the headers that actually ships as part of UIKit. Uh, that's the UI image picker controller. So we'll just open that up. I don't know if you've seen the Open Quickly dialog yet. I, I tend to use this a lot. Um, if you hit Command-Shift-D, it opens up this Open Quickly window. Um, it's, it's up in the menus there somewhere. Oops, sorry. So UI Image Picker Controller. It's actually a subclass of UI View Controller. That's Well, actually, it's, this is a little odd. It, it's a subclass of UI Navigation Controller. Um, that, that's not something that you'll normally see. And for the most part, when you're writing your own code, you won't usually subclass UI Navigation Controller. You usually subclass UI View Controller. But uh, in this case, it subclasses UI Navigation Controller, um, which is OK, because that, that's just a navigation controller. And uh, oh, sorry, that's just a view controller. And, and it can be used to uh, present modally. It, it can slide up. Uh, you can see a little more about that. We won't talk about it too much today, modal presentation. But it, you can check it out in the UI View Controller header. Um, and it defines some information. So uh, you can, oops, let's go down here. It's got some properties. The, the interesting one here is the delegate. So when an, another view controller is going to be presenting this uh, image picker, the other view controller doing the presentation can set itself as the delegate. So it can be told about interesting things that happen in the, in the image picker controller. Um, and a couple of examples of what that might be are down here. It's kind of hard to see this. Make this a little bigger. 
So here we've got the protocol defined, the UI image picker controller delegate. Um, and these are the methods that can be implemented on the, the object that sets itself as the delegate. Um, so we can find out, for example, the image picker controller will tell its delegate when it finished picking an, when the user finished picking an image, and it'll tell the uh, the delegate what image was picked, along with a dictionary of some other information. Uh, for example, like if the user cropped the photo, it'll include the information about the cropping, um, and it'll tell the delegate if the user canceled. So there's a cancel button in the image picker controller. It'll tell the delegate if the if that cancel button was pressed. Um, so that's kind of the, the communication from the view controller, the detail view controller, back to the list. And then the other way around is, is through properties, as we said. Uh, when the first view controller presenting the image picker controller uh, first presents it, it can set some properties on it to tell it what to show. So, uh, for example, it can decide whether or not it should show some camera controls, um, an overlay view. A lot of these are actually new in iPhone OS uh, 3.1, uh, and they support some of the more interesting things. Um, that the image picker can do, you can you can basically present controls over it. So as you're uh, showing the camera, basically, uh, you can put uh, your own custom views over top of the image that the camera is displaying, uh, and all that's set up through these properties uh, that you can set on the image picker controller when you present it. All right. Um, oh, yep. Well, let's let's do this real quick. I think we've got some time for this. Uh, so. We talked about how you uh, would use a property to pass some of this data. Let's take a quick look at what that might look like. Um, in Interface Builder, we've got already this uh, second view controller created, and we just put a label in there called I'm second. But uh, let's imagine that we actually wanted to set the text on that when, when presenting the view controller. Um, so if we go back to our second view controller, we'll need to create an outlet so we can get a pointer to that label. So we'll create our IB outlet, UI label, text label. And if we go back into Interface Builder, we can connect that from our files owner by control dragging. I'm doing this pretty quick, but you should have all seen this by now, so it should be pretty familiar. Create our uh, label outlet, so now we've got a reference to it in the view controller. And we're going to create a new property that our first view controller will be able to set. So we'll call at, at property here. Uh, we'll do, so it's going to be an NS string property. Uh, NS string properties, generally speaking, are, are uh, copy. So we'll use copy semantics for this. We'll create a copy of the string passed in. Um, label. Now, we mentioned, uh, Al mentioned in the lecture last Thursday that view controllers generally create their views lazily. So usually you won't want to store your data directly in the view itself, because the view may not even exist yet. If this view controller hasn't been presented on screen, the nib won't even have been loaded, so text label will still be nil. So we actually need a separate place to store this label in case the uh, application sets the label before the view has been loaded. So we'll create another NS string over here and uh, call it label. This is our uh, place to store that. And then we'll at synthesize uh, label. So we're going to create the setters and the getters for that. Now we'll implement, uh, so basically if our first view controller now sets a label, it's going to set it into this uh, string but it's not going to show up in the user interface yet. So at some point, we need to actually update the uh, content of the label. Um, a good place to do that when you're first loading the view controller is in view did load. Oops, void. So when the view loads, uh, so in this case, the uh, view gets loaded from the nib. As soon as that's done and all your outlets are set up, view did load will get called. So that's a great place to configure any of your views with static data that you've already got stored. Um, sorry, not static, but with data that you've got stored. So we'll set our labels, uh, sorry, our text labels, text to the label that we just stored. And now in first view controller, when we created our second view controller, we set its title. Now we can also uh, set its label. So we'll set the label to, well, let's actually do something a little more interesting here. We'll create a static counter that's going to increment. So create a static int and start that at zero. And every time that we go through this code, we're going to increment that. So since it's static, it's going to keep its value pat through multiple passes. So it'll, it'll go up every time we come through. And we'll set the label text to NS string, string with format, pushed count. And actually, let's start count at one. And oops, sorry, got to pass count in there. 
All right, so now if we run this, every time we go through and push a new view controller, we're going to be setting the uh, value of that string to pushed one, and uh, we'll be setting it on the text when that view controller's view gets loaded. So if we push again, now it's pushed two. And if we keep doing it, it'll just keep going up. So every time we push the view controller, we're actually setting data on there and uh, passing it through without using any kind of global variables or, or outside out of band storage. All right. So that's kind of the idea of the data flow. It's kind of how you want to get things through. We didn't talk too much. Uh, we talked about it, but we didn't really see an example of how you might get things back. Um, you can kind of imagine how that might work. I, I don't know. Does that make any sense? Yeah, the, the concept of the delegation. Um, you basically, you'd have a delegate. We'll, we'll post some sample code if you don't quite understand it. You can take a look at that. Basically, uh, you would define a protocol on your second view controller um, and define a delegate property. Your first view controller would set itself as the delegate, and then the second one can call message, uh, send messages to the first one through that protocol. All right, so uh, there's some other things that navigation controller can do, which uh, allow you to customize the look of the navigation bar with custom buttons or controls. Um, so we've already seen that you can set the title, and you can use the title to set the title of the back button. But uh, some of our applications also use separate buttons that are up there. This example on the right of uh, the, the phone application actually has a separate control in the middle instead of a title. It has a segmented control that lets you toggle between all calls and missed calls. Um, and then another button up on the right with a, a separate title uh, that the user can press to perform some action. Generally, the things that you're going to put up in the navigation bar are usually some kind of control that operates on the entire um, uh, bit of data that's shown on the entire screen. So in this case, uh, the clear button would clear everything that you see there. In the case of world clock, um, the edit button puts the, edit, the table view into editing mode, so it, it modifies the state of the entire view. Usually it's something that affects everything that you see. Um, all right, so let's take a look at how you might do that. Um, there's actually another class that we haven't talked about called UI navigation item. And every view controller has a UI navigation item. Now, UI navigation item defines a few things. It defines a title, um, a left button, a right button, and potentially a center view. Uh, among some other things that you can see in the header, but we're just going to talk about those things for now. Um, let's you set a string for the, uh, for the title and a, another class called UI bar button item, uh, which you can use to define the appearance of buttons for the left and right side. Uh, and there's some other properties. Uh, you can see them in UI navigation bar.h is where uh, UI navigation item is defined. Um, every view controller, as I said, has a navigation item for customizing. Um, when that view controller is the top view controller on your navigation stack, the contents of its navigation item are automatically displayed in the navigation bar. So you don't have to, again, modify the view or deal with the nav UI navigation bar directly. Uh, UI navigation controller will do that. Uh, so it looks kind of like this. This is sort of the, the ownership that you've got your view controller. It owns a navigation item. And the navigation item has a left bar button item, a title view, and a right bar button item. And you can, with those three properties, define those things that show up uh, in your navigation bar. So uh, let's take a quick look at how that's going to work. UI view controller actually already has a title property. So uh, although UI navigation item also defines a title property, it's actually inherited from the view controller. In fact, we already saw this in the little demo there. You set view controller.title to some string, and that showed up in the navigation bar. You don't actually have to set the title on the navigation item. View controller takes care of that. It passes it from that through to the navigation item for you. Um, so that's defined as property copy uh, and a string title on UI view controller. Um, and as I said, it's inherited automatically by the navigation item. All right. Um, oops. So the left and right buttons, for, to deal with these, we actually have to go to the UI navigation item. Um, so we're going to need this UI bar button item class that we mentioned. It's the special class that defines the appearance and behavior of buttons. By itself, it's actually not a subclass of UI view. So a UI bar button item can't be put into the view hierarchy anywhere. It just defines the appearance of buttons that show up specifically in navigation and toolbars. Um, it can display a string or an image uh, in your button, or it can also display uh, a, there's a whole bunch of predefined system items. Uh, these are kind of the things that you see throughout the application shipped by Apple. If you look at mail, it's got a sort of a compose button that's a little square with a, um, uh, a little pencil in it. Um, there's a bunch of them. You can look at the header and see what ones are provided by default. If you don't like the ones that are there or you need something else, you can provide your own icon or your own title and uh, have a custom button. 
And it also defines a target and action, just like regular buttons. Although it's not a UI button, it's a UI bar button item, it still has uh, target and action properties. And we should be pretty familiar with this by now from some of the other stuff we've already done in the assignments. You can basically hook a bar button item up to some other object and uh, set the uh, sorry, set the action method, message that's going to be sent, the selector. And uh, when the user taps on that button in the nav bar, that action method will be sent to the, to the object, the target. All right, so there's a couple styles, as we said. There's a text button item, looks something like this. It can either have a, bo uh, a border like you see there, or it can not be bordered. Um, usually text buttons generally are bordered. Uh, you'd set something up like this, and probably your view did load. Uh, at, pretty much anywhere where you'd normally configure the, the appearance of your, uh, of your view controller's view, you'd also set up your, uh, your bar button item and, and your navigation items. So in this case, we're going to create a new UI bar button item. We'll call alloc init with title. And uh, this is kind of long. It takes just more parameters than most, but they're, they're pretty simple. The first one's the title of the button, so in this case, foo. Second one's the style. Uh, in this case, bordered. There's also, as I said, unbordered. Um, target will be self. So this is our view controller that is going to be displaying um, this navigation item. So self is going to be the view controller. And the action method that we want to have called, we'll call the action method foo. And uh, to get this to actually show up, we have to call self.navigation item, which returns our view controller's navigation item, dot left bar button item. So we're going to set the left bar button item on our navigation item. We'll set that to the foo button. Uh, UI navigation item actually retains the bar button item that we pass in. So after we're done setting it, we can just call foo button release. And uh, it's now in our navigation item. When we're on the top of the navigation stack, navigation controller will automatically put that in the nav bar for us. Second, we've got the system bar button items. So that's the, what we just saw there was text if we wanted to put a string in a button. Here's some of the standard ones. For in this case, we've got the plus button. It's just a standard button that usually means add something. I think it's actually called add. Um, so in this case, we're going to allocate a new UI bar button item. And we'll use a different initializer in this case. So we'll call init with bar button system item. It's kind of an odd name, but yeah, init with bar button system item. UI bar button system item add. And uh, you're going to see this pattern a lot throughout UIKit, and uh, actually quite a few of the other uh, frameworks as well. Basically, all of the UI bar, button item, UI bar button system items start out with the text UI bar button system item, and then end with some custom thing. So in this case, it's add, which is pretty nice when you're using Xcode, because you can just start typing UI bar button system item, and the autocomplete pop-up will show you all the different options of UI bar button system items that are available. So you can see them right there as you're typing. Uh, we're going to say we want style bordered, so we get the border around it. Again, we'll set ourself as the target, and we'll pick a selector add, which we'll have to implement later. Call self.navigationItem.WriteBarButtonItem equals add button, and then we'll release it, because we've set it on our navigation item. Um, there's actually another standard UI bar button item that is provided by all view controllers. Um, it's mostly useful in the case of UI, uh, UI table view controllers. Uh, where it actually is set up already to have the table view enter and exit editing mode, which we'll talk about that on Thursday. But it, it basically puts the, uh, when you enter editing mode, it, it slides over your content a bit and shows a little delete uh, control on the left. Uh, the edit button that, well, it, it's basically this. So it, it's a pretty common pattern. You'd, you'd have an edit button up in your nav bar, which lets you edit the content on this particular uh, screen full of information. So since it's so common, view controller provides this bar button item for you pre-created. So you can get at it uh, by calling, oops, where are we at? Oh, well, that's what we were just talking about with that. You can get at it by calling self.edit but, uh, button item in any view controller. It doesn't have to be a, a, any particular view controller. Just UI view controller itself implements this. So self.edit button item returns a UI bar button item that is pre-configured with the, the text edit. Um, one, you could actually create one that says edit yourself, but one of the nice things about this is that it's localized. So if uh, you ship your application to another country and the user has their phone set in French or, or German or something, the text automatically changes from edit to whatever edit should be in that language. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that when you're writing your app. Uh, so that's pretty nice. Um, and in this case, you just deal with it the way you do with the other bar button items. We'll set it self.navigationItem.leftBarButtonItem item equals that uh, edit button item, and it'll show up on the left. Um, as I said, it's automatically set up to, uh, with a target and action. The target's always self, and the action is always set editing animated. Uh, you can implement this method, and it'll get called when the user taps that edit button. Um, as I mentioned, table view controller is a common place to use this. Uh, table view controller has an implementation of set editing animated that moves the table view in and out of editing mode for you. 
Um, if you're doing some other kind of view that's not a table view, you can implement it yourself and, and indicate editing however you would in your particular view. Uh, the other example we saw in mobile phone a little while ago was a custom title view. We had that uh, segmented control up there that let you toggle between all your calls and your, just your missed calls. Uh, so you can actually put an arbitrary view in place of the title. Uh, there's a property on UI navigation item uh, called, uh, oh, come on, called title view. And you can set an arbitrary UI view subclass there. So you just create your UI view subclass, anything you want, uh, and assign it to that title view. It'll show up in the middle of your navigation bar in place of the title of your view controller. So in this case, we'll create a segmented control. Uh, not going to really show the code for that, but basically you'd either get it out of your nib or call UI, uh, UI segmented control alloc init and set some segments on it. And then we'd set navigation item dot title view equals segmented control. And again, we can release it because the, the navigation item hangs onto it. Uh, the last thing that you might want to customize is the back button. If you've got a title, so as I mentioned, the, the title of your view controller is the thing that shows up in the back button. But you may have a title for your view controller that is just, it, it's pretty long. And as a result, the back button item would just be huge and would take up half your screen. And that might not be what you want. So maybe you want to do something to make that button shorter. You could just change the title, but then that also affects the appearance of the title in the navigation bar when that, thing's full, uh, when that thing is visible. So you might want something different for the title in the nav bar versus the title in the back button when it's not the top view controller. So an example of that would be maybe we've got hello there, CS193P. And that's, I mean, it's not huge, but it's a bit long. It's probably more than we really want in our, our back button. So we can change that uh, I, come on, by creating a new UI bar button item with a different title and setting it as the back button item on our navigation item. Um, this is used only for the back button, not when the view controller is, is front, or sorry, is visible. Um, this is, it's a little odd. It, just have to remember that the thing that's displayed as the title in the top center of your view controller is the title of the visible view controller. The thing that's displayed in the back button is either the title or the back button item for the previous view controller in the navigation stack. It's not the thing that's frontmost. So if you set your back button item, you don't want to set it on what's currently visible. You want to set it on what was visible. Um, so yeah, it's associated with, with the previous one. So if we do that, oh, well, it doesn't quite look like that, but basically you end up with this. And uh, the back button will end up saying, hey, instead of uh, hello CS193P, even though the title of that view controller is still uh, CS1, hello, hello there. All right, so let's take a quick look at that. Just modify what we've already got. Oh, yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sorry, the, the self in these two cases would have been two different, or sorry, would have been the same view controller. It wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't be a different one. So self.title would be hello there, CS193P, because that, it's the title of our view controller. Um, it's not the thing that's, that's currently topmost. The detail view controller is currently topmost. So we also want to set the back button item on that same view controller. Does that make sense? Um, uh, let's take a look at it real quick. It, it'll, it'll make more sense when we see it. Um, so we're going to do this on our first view controller because, so, well, here, let's, let's take a quick look here. Well, let's, sorry, let's make the title longer first. So in our application did finish launching, we set the title to first. Let's, let's make it longer. This is the first view. All right, so now when we actually run this, the title is not ridiculous for the title. It says this is the first view and it fits in there, no problem. But when we go and push, now the back button is actually really wide, right? Because the, the title in the back button is the title of that first view controller. Uh, so that's the thing that we actually want to try and change and make smaller. So uh, the first view controller, we have its title. Second view controller, its title is second. Um, the, the title in the back button still comes from the first view controller, not from the second one. So if we want to customize what that back button looks like at this point, we do it in the exact same spot. We do set it on the first view controller, not, not the second one. So we'd call first view controller, uh, navigation item, back button item. And actually, we have to create one here. UI bar button item. Back button equals UI bar button item alloc. And we'll set a title. So we'll create a new UI bar button item with a title. We'll call it uh, first, just to keep it short. The style will be UI bar button item system. And as I said, we can just uh, see what that's going to look like. So can autocomplete to these. So we'll autocomplete to uh, bordered. It's actually, it doesn't really matter. It's going to do the same thing for you since it's at the back button anyway. 
Um, since it's the back button, we don't need to set a target in action, so we'll set that to nil. The default behavior of the back button is always to go back one, so we don't want to change that. Um, so now we can go back here where we were just doing this. First view controller, navigation item, back bar button item. We'll set that to the back button we just created, and then we'll release back, not retain, release back button. All right, so we set all those properties on first view controller, right? First view controller, we set its title to something long, and we set its back button to something short. So we've still got the, the title. This is the first view. Now when we push the other one, now that back button comes from the first view controller, not from the second one, and uh, we've got the title first. That make more sense now, or still not quite clear? <laughs> no? <laughs> yeah? You create another object that has a back button item, right? Mm -hmm. So where is the previous back button item getting released? So uh, the question is, I, I created a new object that is the new back button item. Uh, where did the previous one get released? Uh, in this case, there actually wasn't a previous one. The, the default um, value of back button item is nil, and it, it's created for you. But even in general, even if you had one, the, the behavior of properties um, is when you... So if you have a property that its behavior is marked retain, when you, you put a, assign some, some value to that property, the value that you just assigned gets retained, right? Now, if you replace that with some new value, when you, you, you assign, assign again to that same property, the value that was already assigned there the first time gets released, and the new value that you're setting gets retained. So part of the semantics of uh, property assignment with, sorry, not property assignment, but properties when the, the properties for retain and copy um, are to release the previous value before retaining and copying the new value. Mm -hmm. uh, if you, in this example, would set uh, a left button item in the second view controller, what, would that replace the back button? Yeah, so the question is, in this case, if I had set a sec, well, let's do it. If I set a sec, uh, back, sorry, <laughs> if I set a left bar button item on the second view controller, uh, what would that do? Would, it, would I no longer be able to go back? And uh, that, that is actually what would happen. So let's create a new UI bar button item in our second view controller. Um, back button, rules, or... UI bar button. It's called left button, actually. Now look, and we'll do this one with a title to, actually, let's, yeah, do a system item in this case. Init with sys bar button system item. UI bar button item. UI bar button system item. Uh, let's do a compose. Target will be self. Selector will be selector compose. And then we'll get uh, self dot navigation item dot oops left bar button item equals left button. And then left button will release it. All right. So now if we run, we've got a custom left button. So now we actually get this compose button up here, and we've we've lost the back button. Uh, this is probably not so good. Uh, in the case of dealing with navigation controllers and navigation stacks like this, you really don't want to replace the back button because that's the standard system behavior. Everyone expects that as they're working through a navigation hierarchy that they can go up to the thing on the left and, and tap it, and that'll take them back one. Um, you can replace it. Generally, you probably don't want to. Oops, we just crashed because I, I clicked it, and we never actually implemented that method. So I don't know, I'm sure you've seen this by now. The uh, second view controller compose unrecognized in, uh, selector sent to instance. We didn't actually implement compose, so when we tapped it, it, it just crashed. Um, right, so let's run that again. Right. So yeah, here's an example of what not to do and, and how to do it. So uh, that's that's pretty much the deal with navigation controllers. Any other questions before we move on? All right. Where are we with time? All right, so tab bar controllers are the next thing we want to talk about. Um, that's the other major style of application flow that we see on the iPhone uh, pretty often. Let's take a look at what that looks like. It's, it's pretty similar in, in basic concept. You've got some, uh, some view controller, in this case the tab bar controller, managing an array of other view controllers. Um, the big difference here is that unlike navigation controller where you're pushing them on and there's a stack of them, tab bar controller, there's just kind of a, an array, and it displays these tabs at the bottom in, your, in a tab bar that it manages. And as the user taps on them, it just swaps the views in and out from one to the other. Uh, there's no animation. It just, you can tap, the user can tap between different, basically distinct parts of your application. 
So if there's no real uh, navigation flow between them, you can kind of put them in like this. In the case of a uh, clock, there's basically uh, four different modes. The clock can be either a timer, a stopwatch, uh, you can set alarms, and there can be a world clock. And you can, the user can just tap between those and, and go between the different modes by tapping a single button. And Tab Bar Controller manages all that for us. Uh, so yeah, what do the pieces look like here? Basically, it's, it's actually pretty simple. Uh, the, the top part is your view controller's view. It's, again, resized up to uh, take into account the space needed at the bottom for the tab bar and uh, display it up there at the top. And then at the bottom is the tab bar itself, which UI tab bar controller manages. Again, you're usually not going to touch that directly. It is a view subclass, and, and you could get it and, and use it. But generally, you just let tab bar controller manage it. You don't really have to deal with the tab bar itself. Uh, oh, sorry, one other thing there. Um, the titles that you see down in the tab bar are actually, again, the title of the view controller. There, there's another item that you can set on a, a particular UI view controller, a, a tab bar item, and that defines the image that's used along with, again, the, the title, although it's also the, the view controller's title that goes in there. Uh, and you can set that just like you set the navigation item, uh, set the property on that to get the image and the, the title to show up there. Uh, also, like a navigation item, there are a bunch of predefined system styles for the, the different icons that you might show in your tab bar. If you don't want to use one of those, you can bring your own art. Um, and it actually colors it for you. So if you have your own image that you want to put down there, it, it pretty much just takes the alpha channel of your image and uses that as a mask. So when it's not selected, it shows it grayed out like that. Uh, and when the user taps on it and it becomes blue, it again just takes that same alpha channel and uses it as a mask to draw blue. Uh, so you only need one image, and it can draw all those different appearances. All right, so how do we set one up? Uh, we actually still create a new one the same way we did before. Yeah, so usually you'll do the same so basic thing that you did with Navigation Controller. You'll, you'll create your tab bar controller and your application did finish launching, or in your nib, you can do it there as well. Uh, so in this case, we'll alloc init our new tab bar controller. Uh, we're going to set the array of view controllers to some NS array of other view controllers. So we've got our My View Controllers array. We created it uh, probably, well, certainly programmatically. Uh, you could actually have set this all up in IB as well. But in this case, we'll assume we created our array of my view controllers in code and then assign it to tabbarcontroller.viewcontrollers. And finally, the same thing we did with nav controller. This is a subclass of view controller. We'll call window add subview tabbarcontroller.view. Get that to show up on the screen. Um, as I said, the view controllers can define their appearance in the tab bar. Uh, they're going to use that UI tab bar item that we just talked about. It'll have a title and an image, or it can be one of the system items. Uh, each view controller comes with a tab bar item for customizing. Just like the navigation item, you don't have to create it. You just call view controller, well, self.tabbar item, uh, and it'll create one for you. And you can assign the properties to it. Um, you can create them with a title and an image, which will give you that. Uh, you'll basically do UI tab bar item. I don't know why I just said that. I was clearly not correct about how that worked. <laughs> UI tab bar item, you actually have to allocate one. Um, UI tab bar item alloc init with title. I have to go back and fix that other one. Um, init with title playlists, and you give it the image, which we'll create with UI image. We'll get image named music.png. We'll assume we've got some music PNG as a resource in our bundle, so we can load it with UI image. Uh, you can actually set a tag on a particular tab bar item. This is maybe less commonly used, but basically it lets you identify it by looking at the tab bar item itself uh, by number. And so we'll just call self.tabbar item equals item and then release it because it's retained by the view controller. Uh, if you wanted to do a system item, these are some of the predefined ones that are provided by UIKit. Uh, bookmarks is one of the examples of that. We'll do almost the exact same thing, except when we allocate uh, our tab bar item, we'll call init with tab bar system item instead of init with title, and provide UI tab bar system item bookmarks in this case. It's going to give us that appearance up there of the, the little book with the te text bookmarks. When you're using the system items, it also defines uh, the text that shows up there. We'll set that like that. Um, actually, I think we're probably going to skip this today. Uh, we'll put up a sample code of what the tab bar controller looks like. Uh, and actually, after we talk about this, we may do something real quick, see how much time we have. Um, all right, so one other thing that tab bar controller does for you is provides this button at the bottom right, the more view controller. Uh, if you have an array of view controllers that you set on your tab bar controller, and it's more than can fit on screen at one time, so normally you can fit up to uh, five like that, uh, it'll replace the last one with the more button. And when you tap more, it, it'll create actually a, a whole table view for you and, and manages all this. You don't have to do anything extra. Um, that lets, shows the user the list of all the other view controllers that you've set on your array. 
and lets them pick between those. And it even actually supports uh, customizing it. So I think I've got a picture of that up here. Uh, we've got the more. When the user taps it, they see this list. And uh, finally, they can actually customize the order. So there's an edit button at the top. If they click it, this new view slides up. It's got all, all the images of all the items that you've set on your tab bar controller array. Uh, and the user can drag them around and reorder them, put different ones down into the tab bar, and just basically change the order and, and what they see in their, in their tab bar itself. And that's functionality that's entirely provided by UI tab bar controller. You just get that by using it. Um, all right, so we've got these two separate things, tab bar controller and navigation controller. But there are applications and cases where you might actually want to combine them and use them both together at the same time. So uh, let's take a look at what that might look like. So the, uh, the application store is a, a good example of that. And uh, another is uh, the, sorry, the music player application. Um, in, this, in both cases, actually, we've got a bunch of tabs at the bottom. And each of those tabs may actually contain a separate navigation hierarchy. So there's, when people come and look at it, they, they often look at it the wrong way around the first time. Uh, pretty often, it's pretty standard that we start reading things on screen from top to bottom. So the first thing someone comes to, they see the navigation bar and think, oh, I'm going to start out with a navigation controller. But uh, that's actually backwards. You, you want to start out with the tab bar controller and put the navigation controller in, uh, in the tab bar controller. Because really, every individual um, tab in your, in your tab bar controller would have then a separate navigation hierarchy. Some of them may not even be navigation controllers, some may be something else. Uh, so that would look something like this. You'd have your tab bar controller, and it would have an array of three view controllers. The first two could be maybe navigation controllers, and the final one, some other custom subclass of UI view controller that's not a navigation controller at all. So when uh, you tap on the first either of the first two, you'd be seeing a, a, tab, a navigation bar up at the top managed by either of those navigation controllers. When the user tapped on the third one in the tab bar, that navigation bar would obviously go away because the view controller being shown doesn't have one, and you just have whatever that view controller was. And then either of those two uh, first navigation controllers, when the user would tap on their corresponding buttons in the tab bar, could have their own distinct navigation hierarchies. Uh, this is actually going to be pretty important for the presence one, uh, sorry, presence one, the uh, paparazzi one assignment. Uh, you'll see that uh, when, you, when you get the assignment and start looking at it. Basically, we have a tab bar that's got two separate navigation stacks. Um, so it would look something like this. You'd, you'd create your tab bar controller with tab bar controller alloc init. Uh, you'd create each navigation controller separately. So navigation controller alloc init, and then push a first view controller onto that first one. Um, and then you'd add them to the tab bar. So you'd do NS array, array with objects, for example, to get an auto-released array. You'd have your first nav controller, your second nav controller, and some other view controller. Ter excuse me, terminate it with nil. So we'd set those, uh, that array of three view controllers as the view controllers for our tab bar controller. Um, and each of those nav controllers would have separate first view controllers. Um, actually, before we, well, actually, first, any questions, and then we'll take a quick look at this, because we've got a few minutes. All right. So, uh, Let's take what we had before, and let's just add a tab bar to it. So we had this. Remember, we already had our first view controller, and we could push one, and we'd get a second. Uh, except we kind of screwed that one up, so let's remove that line. <laughs> That's not doing us any favors there. All right, so let's go back to our application delegate now. And where we were creating our navigation controller, we were hanging on to it up here. So we're, now let's also create a tab bar controller. Oops. Oh, tab bar, tab bar controller. And we'll do this here. So we're going to allocate a new UI tab bar controller. Oops. And we're going to want to release it in dialloc again so we make sure that we're managing our memory. Oops. Jeez, having some trouble with the keyboard. Not dialloc, we're going to call release, not dialloc. Um, let's create one more view controller. Uh, this isn't going to be particularly interesting. We'll just create an empty view controller, so we, don't even, we won't even subclass it. And we'll use then the view controller we just created, the empty one, and our navigation controller we created before as the two items in our tab bar controller. Oops. So we'll call tab bar controller dot uh, view controllers equals NS array. I don't need that. Array with objects. So we'll pass 
first of all, we'll start out with that nav controller we had, so it's the first thing. And then we'll also add that view controller that we just created, terminate it with nil. Uh, we have to change one more thing down here because we were already adding the navigation controller's view to the window. Instead, we want to add the tab bar controller's view to the window now. And that's really all we have to do. So now you can run it, and we've got our first view controllers down here. This is the first view. Its title is already in the, in the bar for us. And the second one's over here. We didn't give it any content, so it's just that second empty view controller. But we can go back and forth between them. If we push the first view controller and we have the second one in our first navigation stack, we can still switch over to, the, uh, to that new view controller we created. When we go back, everything's where we left it. And it's a, a totally distinct navigation hierarchy. If we really wanted to see that, we could actually, uh, instead of pushing that empty view controller, we could just push a second first view controller. <laughs> Sounds a little weird. So let's replace this actually, uh, sorry, not that, this, with a new one of these first view controllers. Uh, well, second first view controller. <laughs> Sounds pretty good. Um, and put that there. Except I kind of uh, kind of messed up the memory management here a little bit. So let's fix that. Um, second first view controller now needs to get released because we're not hanging onto a pointer to it. And uh, yeah. All right. So we've actually got. Oh, right, I didn't set up a second navigation hierarchy. <laughs> so, uh, let's stop at that, because it's going to be a lot more code to start adding more navigation hierarchies. Um, so yeah, we've got our one here that's distinct and independent from the other one that we put over here. Um, actually, if we were to try and push this, nothing would happen, because we didn't put it in a navigation controller. So push another was actually calling that push method, which would call self that navigation uh, uh, controller. And that's returning nil in this case, because this one's not in a navigation controller. But it still works over here. So yeah, that's about that. Uh, questions? Otherwise, we're pretty much done. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.